Here's one of the top 10 reasons why statisticians are misunderstood. They are 99% confident that sleep cannot be induced in an introductory statistics class by lecturing on z-scores. And hopefully I won't put you to sleep with this one. So we're going to use z-scores other than 1, 2, or 3. And I know I kind of talked about them in the calculator. You should also be able to use them in your book. So on, on these examples, I'm using both book and calculator. So how can we tell what percent of the population is below a z-score of 180? Well, there's actually a table z in the back of your book, and it provides the area under the curve um, before the z-value. So since the total area is 1, this works as the fraction of the data below the curve, or the population really. So looking at this, you basically go 1.80, there's 1.8, and there's the hundredths place on the top header there, and you see the number 0.9641. Okay, so when the z-score is 1.80, then 0.9641 or 96.41 percent of the population is below that value. So it's the area to the left. If z is less than zero, be sure to use the right side. So this is from the left side of the column. There's another column that says negative z, and just again, you're going to look for the same number, it's going to be negative, and use the hundreds place heading. So it's kind of like it's working backwards. So let's do an example. Driving long distances, which Tiger Woods is very good at. Let's assume his mean drive, uh, when using his driver, is 304 yards and there's he has a standard deviation of 8 yards. What percent of Tiger Woods drives are less than 290 yards? So the z-score, we've got to go with the data value, 290 minus 304. So we get a negative z-value of negative 1.75, which makes sense because that would be below his average. Well, the table automatically gives you that. So if you look up, again, you're going to have to use the right side, negative 1.7, and then look up the 05 header, you should get 0.041 or 4.01%. The good news is your calculator is also very good at doing this, but your calculator doesn't assume do the area to the left. It's usually doing the area between two values. But if you use a negative 1,000 over here, um, honestly, I think negative 10 works fine, but let's just use a negative 1,000 to be safe. Um, it should give you the right value. So here's how you can get the same answer on your calculator. Much easier, by the way. So make sure you hit second and distribution then normal CDF, and we're going to put negative 1,000, comma, negative 1.75. Now your values may or may not match exactly. We are so, actually, uh, if you round this to the thousands place, we match 0 0.401 because of that 5 right there. So I have the feeling most of you are going to prefer using your calculators for this, but I'm still going to show you the values by hand. When you're doing this, well, first of all, you got to calculate your z-score. You should always write that down under your when you're doing your work. So, okay, so what if we want the area to the right of the z-score? Well, since the total area is 1, we just subtract. So we go 1 minus 0.9641, and we would get 0.0359 or 3.59%. Uh, Let's take a look at what percent of Tiger Woods drives are more than 290 yards. Um, so again, we just go 1 minus 0 0.0401 equals 0.9599 or 95.99%. Basically, this 0 0.0401 came from our previous answer. Um, but I can also do it with a calculator. So we'll do second distribution. And since I'm going to the right, I'm going to use 1,000 for the right value. So I'm going to have the negative 1.75, comma, and there we go, and hit enter, and we get pretty much the same answer. Okay, so let's take a look at what about between two values. So what we're going to do is what percent of Tiger Woods drives travel between 305 and 325. So I'm going to do this by hand again. I'm going to have to do new z-scores, and then I'll show you how to do it on the calculator. I still need the z-scores, though. So I'm going to call this ZL. It's like because there are so many z's. This is z on the lower end, or the uh, left. Um, 
So I have 305 minus 304 and I divide by 8 and I get 0.13. So it's slightly above the average. I should have this slid over just a touch, but this will work. And the, oops, the area to the left of that, if I look it up in the table, is 0.5517. So this white area right here. I also want to calculate the right area. So or the Z for the right. That's not the right area. 325 minus 305. All it divided by 8 is 2.63. And if I look up in the table, the area to the left of that is 0.9957. So how do I put these two pieces together? Well, the 0.5517 is the yellow area. And the 0.9957 is this whole area right here. Well, if I subtract the pink minus the yellow, that'll give me the blue area, which is basically 0 0.4440. Honestly, this is much easier on your calculator um, because I have my two Z values. So I can go ahead and go second dis uh, distribution, normal CDF, which is 2, 0.13, and 2.63. So it's actually going to give you the area between the two Z values automatically. But you should be able to go ahead and do it both by hand and by calculator. When I was your age, we didn't have that function. I had to look everything up in tables. So now what I'd like you to try is we have a fast food restaurant has just installed a new ketchup dispenser. The amount of ketchup dispensed by the machine follows a normal distribution with a mean of 1.05 or 1 in 500 ounces and a standard deviation of 8 hundredths of an ounce. The restaurant's goal is to get between 1.0 and 1.12 ounces of ketchup dispensed each time. What percent of the time will that happen? Well, if go ahead and calculate your z-scores and use the table and I'd recommend using both. Try it with the table and try it with the calculator and your answer should be about 70%. On the next video, I'm going to tell you how we're going to answer the question. Suppose the manager adjusts the machine settings so the mean amount of ketchup is dispensed is now 1.1 ounces. What must be the new standard deviation so 99% of the burgers have between 1 and 1.2 ounces of ketchup on them? So on the next lesson, we're going to go backwards from percents to values.